Well, good morning. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. Do I have a treat for you today? I made Cornish pasties. Mm, these are so good. This is the original lunchbox, by the way. Here are the ingredients. You can pause and write them down, but of course I'll go over them as we cook. Now let's get cooking. For a Cornish pasty, we start with the crust, and it could be the most important part. I have in my food processor two cups of bread flour, one cup of all-purpose, and I've just added a teaspoon and a half of salt. Now, I know you don't usually use bread flour for a pastry crust uh, or a pie crust. This is a little different. We need a strong crust, but we don't want it to be tough. So we're using bread flour because it has a little more protein. Um, and I'm going to just fluff that up here uh, and mix the salt in. And, and this is not a lot different than a regular pie crust, but you'll see the difference when we start working with it. I have here a half cup butter and a half cup lard. And yes, you do need to use lard. Uh, you could use vegetable shortening if you want to. Uh, I suppose you could use all butter, uh, but you really get a, a better texture if you mix it half and half with lard and butter. Uh, you can buy it in the grocery store if you don't have it. So we, we're going to put that in, and you can see that I cut it up in little pieces first. And then we're going to pulse this several times uh, to, to get it mixed up. And what I'm trying to do here is not to totally mix it, but to make sure there are no large clumps of the butter or lard. We just want it distributed all the way through. Uh, and I think we've probably just about got it. And, and I don't really think you could mix it too much. But no need to overdo. I'm going to show you what we've got here. I don't see any large lumps. It's pretty much distributed. There are a few that are maybe the size of, of peas. And that's about what you want. So now I've got about a cup of water, and I may not use all of it. I'm going to add water slowly. And I'm sorry I put my hand in the way, but I think you can still see. I'm going to add water slowly until I actually get something that looks like dough. And then I'll stop. And there you go. That looks like dough. Now that was not ice water. For pie crust, I use ice water. We want something a little sturdier here. So now I'm going to put it out, turn it out. Let me get that blade out. Turn it out here on my uh, Silpat uh, sheet here. And you can see the texture of it here. It's almost like the texture of bread. And like bread, not like pie crust, like bread, I'm going to knead this a little. Not a whole lot, maybe a minute. Um, what we're doing is making a sturdy crust uh, that will hold the food as it cooks. And um, I mean, you know, if you, if you put this in a pie crust, it would crack the first time you bumped against it. A pie crust is tender. And this is not going to be tough, uh, but it's going to be sturdy. And when you bite into it, it's still going to have some flakiness to it, thanks to the lard. So maybe a minute, no more than that. And then I'm going to form it into a ball. And we're going to chill this for at least an hour. And I warn you not to skip the chilling step, uh, because this is a soft, soft dough. Uh, and if you don't chill it, it's going to be a little bit hard to work with. So I will put this in a bowl, and I'll sprinkle a little flour in the bowl to keep it from sticking. And then I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for an hour, covered. And you know you could chill it overnight if you wanted to. Now I have here uh, between a half and a three-quarter pound of beef. And it's sliced very thin. This is round. Uh, you can use any kind, even some kind of a cheap cut, because it's going to be so thin that it'll be tender. And I put some salt and pepper on it to taste. And I have here some chopped up veggies. 
about a cup of potatoes, a third cup rutabaga or turnip, a half cup of onions, and one small carrot. And you can see that I'm putting salt and pepper to taste. That's about a, a teaspoon and a half of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. You can use black pepper. I just prefer red pepper flakes. Uh, and you won't get another chance to salt it. You won't get a chance to taste it because these are going to be sealed up. So go ahead and put as much salt as you think you'll need. So now I've taken out our chilled pie crust and I'm going to cut this into quarters because this is going to make four pasties. And just so you know, I'm cooking two tonight and I'm wrapping two up in aluminum foil and I'll cook them later before they're cooked. So we've got this cut and you know, if your kitchen's pretty warm, you may want to refrigerate uh, two of them while you work with the first two. So form it into a ball and we want an eight inch approximate circle. Doesn't have to actually be a circle, but sort of circular. And you know, the rules of working with pie crust apply. Roll it in one direction and turn it and roll it in one direction and turn it. Uh, and then once you get it close to the shape, then you can move your rolling pin around. You want to try to get this as even as you can to pull it out into a circle. And I'll have to trim a little bit of this off, but probably not too much. And you see that crust is pretty easy to handle. It's sturdy enough. That's my eight inch mark. So I want to make sure that I have at least eight inches all the way around. And, and it doesn't tear when I work with it this way. That's, that's a good thing to know. And before we add our filling, I'm going to egg wash the whole thing. That's going to help it be sturdy and stand up, uh, not get mushy on the inside. And, and it really didn't get mushy on the inside. So now I'm going to put one quarter of the beef, however much beef you had, put a quarter of it in. Uh, and I, I'm doing the meat and vegetables separately because I may have a little bit too many chopped vegetables. Uh, and I, I don't mind if a little bit of those are left over, but I don't want any beef left over. I want to get it all in there because you know it's like buying gold. Um, but this was an expensive cut, so it's okay. So fill it really full. I mean, get it just as full as you think you can f can uh, get it and still fold it over and keep it pulled away. You know, I'm sort of offset there because we're going to fold it. And you know, my camera accidentally got turned off on the first one. So this is the second one. So you want to put two thin slices of butter right on top of this. All your vegetables and your meat are raw. You want a little butter in there to help them cook and to make it juicy. So here we go. We're going to fold it over. Now you see how that crust holds up to handling it. I'm not sure a regular pie crust would. So fold it over, offset, and seal it all the way around. We're going to do like three layers of seal on this to make sure nothing comes out and make sure that none of your stuffing is peeking out at all. And then we're going to make the next fold. I'm just going to go around, get a little flour. Let me turn it so you can see it. And if you need to trim this, you can. I, I'm really not going to trim this one. So fold it over, kind of make a seam. Now, as I'm doing this, if you think this is too much trouble, you don't have to do this. You can cut it off even and crimp it with a fork, uh, which I have done. And if I'm in a hurry, I would do it now. But I wanted to show you how to make this traditional kind of fold. So we've got that pushed together. Now I'm going to crimp it as close as I can to the way I would crimp a pie crust which is two fingers together, pinching one finger. 
uh, when, when I get around, you can see it. And it's a little bit awkward for me. So it's not as pretty as my pie crust would be. But it looks pretty darn good. And we go all the way around. And make that little crimp. Now you know that's pretty, right? That's pretty. Got a little spot there that I don't like the way that looks. And there you go. So we're going to egg wash this on the outside also. All the way around. Trying to avoid any gaps. And here you go. Now I'm going to put this on a, a cookie sheet, baking sheet. You can put it on a cast iron skillet anywhere you want to. I have parchment paper on a cookie sheet. Because I just like using parchment paper. And as I said, I'm cooking too. Now I'm going to egg wash the second one. I didn't get that done. I'm sorry, the first one. Because my camera stopped working. So I'll egg wash it. And then I'm going to put these in the oven at 350 degrees for an hour. And look at that. Aren't those pretty? I'm going to move them to a rack and let them cool. Probably about 15 minutes or so. Because the inside is just molten. It is hot. And I want to let you listen to this crust. See, it's very crispy. When we cut into it, you'll see it's still flaky. Now, I'm not dressing this up at all. I may put a little more butter on it when I eat it, but you know me. You can never have too much butter. But I think it's beautiful just as it is. And the history of this is that it went into the lunchbox just like that for miners. Uh, that was their lunch. That's why I call this the original lunchbox. Now I'm going to cut right into it, and yes, the crust is very flaky, and see the inside, it's just full of meat. Uh, it's a very hearty meal, and it's a meal by itself. Meat and veggies and bread, and oh, the bread part is so good. I'm going to try to bite it. It's still really, really hot, but I want to show you the crust and how it stays flaky, not at all tough. See the flakes there? I never know what you can see on the camera, but it's yummy. I'm going to try another bite. Mother's ready to eat. So I'm going to take this to the table and she has her own. It is good. Thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.